We'll start using database fleet manager by creating the central management resource named fleet by specifying fleet name and Azure region. Next, we specify a set of price and performance policies called tiers. We can create a tier by specifying our desired compute and storage requirements for databases in a tier, or add some preset tiers with configurations that Azure Platform thinks would work just fine for our database fleet. For our business critical databases, we have a premium tier, while on the other end of the spectrum, we have a bronze tier where we have many databases sharing just a few cores. We can now go ahead and create our fleet resource. Our fleet resource is now created. On the fleet resource page, we can see basic fleet information such as how many databases and tiers we have. We can also start adding new databases. We can create a new empty database. It's as simple as specifying database name and selecting which tier the database will belong to. We can also add existing databases and have them become part of the fleet. We do that by selecting databases we want to start managing with the fleet and select which tier policy should be applied on each database. Once we do that, the databases are now managed by the fleet manager. If you're building a solution that works with a DB per tenant pattern, you probably won't click through the portal for every new database. The code path for provisioning a new database is quite literally a one-liner. Our fleet has been running for some time, so let's check out the status in the database fleet manager page. Our fleet grew significantly and we have a lot of databases. We can get a quick look at some key metrics such as breakdown of number of databases, cost or resource utilization per tier. To help us manage the fleet more easily, Platform also has some recommendations for us based on our workload. We can select one of the recommendations for more details. We see here that based on our specific workload, we could save money by allowing more databases per elastic pool without compromising performance. We can also see what actions the database fleet manager performed on our resources. So even though the fleet manager does everything for us, everything is transparent, allowing us to debug potential issues more easily.